the human-mouse disease connection in MGI. The human-mouse disease connection, or HMDC, is a clinical genetic research and translational tool allowing a rapid visual association between genes and their phenotypes. You can begin with a gene list such as one derived from an exome sequencing result in a specific mouse or human patient, a genomic region defined by a GWAS or QTL association study, a disease or an observed phenotype. To access the HMDC, simply click on a button, click on the HMDC button from the Mouse Genome Informatics homepage. Along the top of the HMDC home, you can see three boxes allowing you uh, to search by gene, genome location, or disease term. You additionally have the option to upload a VCF file or a text file with gene symbols. Below the search boxes on the left, you can see a page tour, a quick introduction to mouse genetics and glossary, and on the right, a spotlight section which compares a specific human disease to its mouse model. Please notice as well that entry of both human and mouse gene symbols, locations, and annotations are supported. In this example, we'll run a simple genes search with the following six genes, simply by pasting them into the first window on the left. This reveals a visual grid of associated phenotype and disease results. Each row corresponds to a gene, and then each column represents a phenotype or disease association. Colored boxes at the intersection indicate that a particular gene has an annotation within that system. On the left of the grid, in blue, you can see mammalian phenotype systems, which come from the mouse data and annotations. On the right, you see human diseases, where orange indicates that a gene has been associated from studies in human patients and loaded from OMIM, or blue indicates that a mouse mutant has been described as a model for that human disease. Bicolored boxes with both blue and orange indicate that mutations in this gene have been disease-associated in both species. I'll also draw your attention along the top to the additional genes and diseases tabs in behind, and we'll look into those a little bit later. The different colored shading within the grid is used to indicate the number of annotations in a given system. A very light colored box, such as seen here at the intersection of IL-20RA and cellular phenotype, may bring up a single annotation, and clicking on that box will bring up the precise allele in which the cellular phenotype was reported along with the more specific term of osteoclast differentiation. Clicking on a dark colored box, as seen at the intersection of JAK3 and immune system, reveals multiple JAK3 alleles and many more precise terms under the umbrella of immune system. Similarly, on the right side of the grid, clicking the cells with data will reveal details of gene disease associations. Gap junction 9 is an example of a gene which has been associated to cataracts in both human and mouse, and you can see four different alleles in the mouse have all been used as cataract disease models. Along with exploring and drilling down into the data, it's possible to apply filters for both columns and rows, which will hide any systems or genes that have no data in the selections. And this will filter all tabs. Alongside the grid, I'll remind you that there are the gene and disease tabs. If we take a look at the gene tab, you can see that this is a downloadable file. It allows you to find references in mouse models. Both human and mouse are reported as separate rows. You see here the FRG1. References in MGI uh, gives you a quick link there. You'll also notice disease-relevant references are provided, and these are um, publications that specifically report use of, of uh, mutant mice as disease models for a human, disease, for a human uh, condition. I'll also draw your attention to the column at the end, where you can find if mice with mutations in this gene have been deposited for commercial or public distribution with the IMSR. On the Diseases tab, again, it's downloadable. You can find all gene associations in both human and mouse. Here, if we click on one of the hyperlinked diseases, you'll go to a human disease and mouse model detail page, in this case for severe combined immunodeficiency and this provides you with a, another visual display of genes that have been associated in mouse, genes that have been associated in human, and uh, not in this particular case, but if you see both the human and the mouse icons next to the, sa next to the same row, it's a, ge a gene that's been disease-associated in both species. Search terms can also be combined in the HMDC, here for example using a human position, and adding alongside it a disease term 
If you type in uh, a disease term within quotes, you'll match the whole term, or you can enter multiple uh, diseases or disease terms. So cleft palate will match as two terms. There's also a drop-down menu that will appear where you can select cleft palate as a specific mammalian phenotype in a structured vocabulary fashion, or you can select cleft palate, in this case cleft palate isolated CPI, as a specific OMIM disease. Uh, going forward, we'll use the cleft palate in quotes to match the whole term. And you can see that the combined search results for the region and annotation, uh, every single gene that's returned is within that genome region and contains at least one mouse homolog genotype with cleft palate or a, or a child term of cleft palate as an MP annotation. You'll see there's this one column or this one row for the DDX59 gene, uh, which does not have any data in the craniofacial category but the same MP genotype is a disease model for a human condition uh, which, whose synonym contains the phrase cleft palate. So in summary, the human mouse disease connection allows rapid accession and association of gene phenotype or gene disease information. It allows clinical researchers with human data to perform functional or phenotypic annotation to a gene list based on biological data, and it's straightforward discovery of mouse models. If you have any questions, please contact mgihelp at jax.org and we'd be happy to hear from you.